It's Lockyer. The phone cut off. Uh, back at it. Verse 42. Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob. Okay. So the covenant was uh was, was with Jacob, but it started with who? Let's go. And also my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember and I remember the land. So that's the process, man. All right. And this is the importance of the atonement. Okay. Because the atonement <laughs> is bringing us at one to the most high and it's clearing us. Okay. It clears us. It, 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 that atonement I'm speaking of, okay, mainly of, of the one, I'm speaking of the one of Yahweh Shah, okay? But the, um, you're rehearsing the righteous acts. So the Day of Atonement itself, Leviticus 23 and... Um, verse... Eight, no, not eight, nine, ten, eleven. Let's see. What's up, more Salakia? Okay, so we just passed the memorial of the blowing trumpets, so we got to be right here. Verse 26, Leviticus 23 26. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Okay, now Moses was from the tribe of Levi, and these were the Levitical lords. Levi, uh, the Hebrew word will be lawyer, which means joined to. Okay, so verse 27. Also on the 10th day of the seventh month. Now the seventh month is what? It's not going by the seventh month on the Roman calendar, August. Okay, it's going by the, the month. The word month goes back to the word moon. So you will have to know the lunar moon calendar, okay, which the apostles of GMS bring out and they show you the new moons, okay, and there's apps on how to read it, all right, and there's a lot of scriptures to go into how uh, the new month was, uh, uh, the month is according to the moon, it's one it's a rock, okay, that explains that as well. It says, there shall be a day of atonement, all right, so on the 10th day of the sun, so when it when the blowing of the trumpets came, 10 days after, okay, that's when the Day of Atonement would be. And it says, it shall be a holy convocation, okay? So holy means separate convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls. Now, I'm you know, saying afflict your souls, okay, is to pretty much fast, okay? You know, to afflict, to humble yourself, to be bowed. So it's just to fast. You know, not to beat yourself up or anything. It says, and offer, offer me by fire unto the Lord. Now, this is why we say rehearsing because, you know, you can't do any offerings made by fire unto the Most High, you know, in these, uh, in these, uh, these, in these situations. So these are things that will be done um, accurately in the kingdom of heaven. This is why, you know, we look forward to see that because we have been so far moved from our actual heritage and our high holy days that we celebrate these holy day uh holidays okay which they have here which are hella days which are pagan worshiping you know to a max and we put you know everything past it like you'll be at your last but you'll give by presence and go in debt just because you believe that that was you know i've seen that my father do it of you know those are traditions that were passed down of men and really is a pagan tradition because it says not to do that in Jeremiah, the 10th chapter. But uh, not to stay away from the uh, the main point of this lesson. All right. The point is, is what? That the Most High gave us a day to make an atonement for our sins. How beautiful is that? That this day, okay, the Lord is going to basically, man, um, you know, you're going to be, it's basically going to be a, 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 a purge, you know, purge away your, uh, to purge away those um those sins and ultimately that's why we give the praise to Yahweh Shai because he have done that you know he have basically purged away the action of making amends for a wrong or injury the Lord is setting up a day to actually amend your wrongs we don't have that in our community at all once you wrong somebody it's just like that's it for the life but there's a day where the Lord set up where you know we wrong we wronged him. You know, imagine that being done in the community. There's be one day where everybody who wrongs each other got to get up and come together 
and repair what was done. That would be so powerful, you know, because then you want to have all of these gang shootings and this, because a lot of them shootings and stuff like that be like, be like one killing after another because this person did this person wrong and they did that. And so they getting back and they going back. So this would stop crime as is. This would stop a lot of shootings and mass death because they will actually make amends for wrong or injury. They will be able to repair that. And they will have to, uh, in that day of atonement, they'll be there for that, just for that to be repaired. And that will be, that's a healing, man. So the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shah, God, has days of uh, high holy day for healing. That's powerful. You know, you see people, uh, chakras and healing music. No, this is the healing right here, the day of atonement. And like again, like I said, I can't uh, say it even more. Yahweh Shai, man, all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, actually made an atonement for us. You know, for us, he made an atonement for us. He repaired the wrong for us with his life. With his life, he went on the cross and repaired it for you. So you can live a better, can now have that relationship with the Most High and be brought into a kingdom and live righteously. So, so you can be put on. He did that for you. Not too many people put others on, okay, with the sacrifice of their lives, all right? With they don't get enjoyment. It's not like, you know, how you see Jake put other Jakes on, but they're enjoying themselves. The Lord didn't get to enjoy necessarily. He's going to enjoy it. So let me not say that. On the back end, you know, he's going to enjoy it. So, you know, um, let me like pretty much rephrase it, you know. He, when he comes back, he's going to, he said, like to say, oh, the next time I won't uh, basically drink is when we in the kingdom together. So we're going to, you know, the Lord is going to have that enjoyment. But uh, his life, you know, was, was so much pain and turmoil, you know, just so we could pretty much be set up, uh, clean out our wrong ways and be brought back into the heavenly father. You know, if that makes sense, you know, Lord Willis does. And uh, just shedding light on the, these days, man, because, you know, the world ain't going to do it. So, you know, it's our job to uh, uplift it and shed light on it and be thankful for it, you know, and pretty much give praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And like uh, the elder Yashua would said, we can't praise him enough, you know. But these are beautiful things that the Lord have put in place for us already, knowing. Hey, has somebody put in place something for you like this? Because you already know that you're going to mess up. You know, most people don't put things in play because they know you're going to mess up. They'll hold things against you, you know. And that's why it's good to be around good brothers because you may mess up. You may say some, <laughs> you may say some, or get excited, and you know a brother could take offense, you know, and hold it to you. But ultimately, that brother being a man of the Lord, he's not gonna hold it hold it against you. Or it could be different things. It could be things you do, certain, you know, you know, we all got different spirits. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, guess what, man? The Lord have made have uh, made a day to repair like ultra violations. Ultra violation, like serving another guy is ultra violation, bro. That's just like, that's like, bro. I made you, I put you, I gave you spirit, I, I gave you the medals, and you set that other deity up, and you worship like, like, bro. That's 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 vile. That's crazy. But we have done it, you know, even up until this day, you know. And what we get out, give our energy to, and things of that nature. So, you know, man, all praise to you. How about Shimia Washa? About Shimra Kakadash. Verse 28, and ye shall do no work in the same day. So, you know, some brothers may have work. Again, it's rehearsing the righteous acts. You know, if you're able to get it off, you're able to get it off. You know, but the work we'll do is, the sacrifices we'll do is, uh, you know, p- pushing this truth. You know, going out in the highways and byways. But it's all rehearsing. You say, you know, judge no man on any high holy day. So, if brother, go to work. You know, he go to work. If he, you know, it's all rehearsal. You know, it's all rehearsal. It's just beautiful to know at the end of the day and to give praises to the most high about. You know, but we are required to rehearse the righteous acts. Okay, so it says, but it is as a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. You see, so the Lord is doing that for us. You know, now this is scripture in um, Second Address, right, where basically the Lord will whip your ass just you know for a minute. So which one you rather choose? You know. And see, a lot of the two thirds is going to get this, and they still not even going to get. Uh, it's still not going to uh, uh, correct them. This is a uh, second edges sixteen and nineteen. Behold, famine, plague, and tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for a minute, so they're meant to correct you. All right, but for all these, 
things. They shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of their scourges. So a hundred cops could go out right now and shoot up a hundred a hundred jakes, right? But they won't turn back. Okay, they won't be mindful. Okay, of their scourges. They won't be mindful. They won't turn around and say, "Damn, what the hell is going on? Why are is this happening to us?" And they see the men on the highways and byways, but they still won't be mindful that. You know what? We are we are wicked. You know, we are exceedingly sinful. You know, we need to turn. We need the power to justify us because nobody down here is helping us. I mean, here it is. The only way to get funding from anything, you can have a whole business, and everything, right? Great ideas and everything. You know, the only way to get funding is if you go and go to college, or if you get shot by a so-called white male cop. Real talk. Or you you know you get injured. And they uh ESO give you money. That's the that's the only way they're gonna find you. So who's gonna help us in these circumstances? We need a higher power to really change us out, uh, out of this worst case scenario. All right. Um. Yeah. So that's that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm not gonna go too much further. Um. I believe in numbers. Um. You know, just to put it out there, and this would be a you know good read. Numbers twenty. 25th chapter, I guess. Uh, I don't know. It'll be numbers the 15th chapter, I believe. Where it goes into uh, the Day of Atonement. You know what? Let's see, Google. Well, this is Esau's Day of Atonement. This popped up, okay? This is not uh, according to the movie, you know, it's the, the, the fake. So, yeah, uh, Le- Leviticus 16, 16th chapter, okay, we're going to it. Of course, we read Leviticus uh, 23. But, you know, it goes into the story. And um, like I was saying, the Lord beard the, beard the sins, Okay, as the scapegoat, I'll just type the scapegoat and it'll come up. Yeah, it's Leviticus 16. This is a this is the one we really and you know that those were the lot for one goat. So Yahweh Shah embodied this whole thing, you know? Because the scapegoat, that's where you get the movie Fallen. This is the angel what where, where you know the demon was able to, if you touched it, it went on you. Because if you look at the word up here, it says Azazel. That was his name. Okay, so that scapegoat. Look, it says, refer to the goat used for sacrifice for the sins of the people. So they put the sins on the goat. They literally put the sins. So the, the, and that goat had to be taken in the middle of the woods and left, you know. So um, let me see if it say it here. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe I'll, you know, just go ahead and go with it. <laughs> um, Let's go to this. Uh, number 16 and 10, but the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. You see? And Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself. Okay. As Yahweh Shai made an atonement for him since first. Um, so where did he sin at? Mm-hmm. At Solomon. Okay, which is for himself and shall make an atonement for himself and for the, his house and shall kill the bullock of the offering, which is for himself. And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar from uh, before the Lord in his hands full of sweet incense, beaten small and bring it within the veil. You know, that's pretty much the mer- most high and to come on the mercy seat. Um, This is not the part I really want to get. I just really want to show the... uh. The scapegoat, but like I said, this is a good read. This is definitely a good read. No, well, let me just read through this, man. It says in um verse 13, he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony that he die not. Right. Verse 14, he shall so Aaron was the high priest, so this is why it's focused on Aaron to do that. So the sons of Aaron will, will be the high priest who to do that office. Now that's why um Yahweh Shai, he was from the tribe of Judah. <laughs> See? 
But ultimately, he was the high priest set up in the spirit realm, okay? Because there are, you know, that that's that's where the, the Jews couldn't get. You know, they were of uh, the tradition. They didn't know that there was a realm that outweighed the tradition of, of the men, okay? The, like the way of, of Moses, which was, which was heavy, but it was just a reflection of how things is done in the heavens. But there was already an order set up in the heavens, you know, if I make sense. And they just couldn't understand that they Yahweh shall outruled what was being played down out on heaven on on earth, excuse me, because it was just a uh pretty much a forecasting of what is happening in the heavens and you know, but they couldn't get it, you know, which which <laughs> hey, no one could get, you know, unless the Lord opened your eyes to it. The most high. That's why he said, uh hey, Peter. Let's just see who, you know, who I, you know, the eyes can see, you know, because flesh and, flesh, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you. You know, so that, hey, man, if you're able to get this truth, man, you're blessed. You're blessed, man. You know, really, for real, man. All praise to Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. It says, uh, verse 14, he shall take of the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with the finger upon the mercy seat eastward. So, man, look at this. Look at how the style of, of things had to be done, like. All the way down to a T, you know, you had to do it with your fingers, you know, upon the mercy seat, you had to be doing it eastward. And before the mercy seat, shall he sprinkle the blood with his fingers seven times. You had to do it a certain amount of times. So this is where we say through the spirit, we know a lot of those who are of the tribe of Levi. I mean, oh, those, um, those the, the people of Haiti, all right, are from the tribe of Levi. And some of them are, you know, would be the flood. You know, according to the flesh, like a lot of them will be the sons of Aaron. Now, we're not saying that all the Levites are there only, all right, and that every last single Haitian is there. But for the most part, they are because those are the ones that tap into what? Doing sacrifices. You know what's, uh, you know what's cool to understand? You watch the, the thing with Joey Badass. He just did something with uh, uh, do, tapping into voodoo, and he was with Haitians. So why does they go to Haitians when they're tapping into that? Hmm? And they're into blood sacrifices and kind of like tapping into that energy. And why is that? Because that is what did, what did he do. He made a cloud of smoke. Just imagine that. Just try to envision with, you know, see that on the same side. He made a cloud of smoke. They're taking animals. They're putting blood on their finger. They're sprinkling blood. They're facing a certain way. That is what they do. You can't not deny that, you know. And if you can't see that, it's because you aren't meant to. You know, verse 15, then shall the then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering. Look at this. This is this is in the Holy Bible. That is for the people. OK, this is for the people and bring his blood within the veil and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat before the mercy seat. So he did it seven times at one. And then he got to do the same thing with this one. But this time, this is for the blood of the people. Now, who are the people? That uh, violate or transgress, those are the Israelites. And that's why we say the salvation, repentance, and sins is for only for the Israelites. This, this the same thing applies of what they were doing back then. So if the blood was to cover their sins during this time, then why would how how could that change for when the Lord came on the scene? His blood would just be for everybody? No. His blood would be for the children of Israel. It's just the children of Israel was was so scattered out when you read throughout the, the Bible. And that's why it's good to get um, to to read, and really it's good to have uh, elders, okay, to guide you through it, man, so you can understand that, you know. But a lot of people don't really get into it, you know, and that's because the spirit. Ain't, if the spirit is on you, you you understand. The Holy Spirit is on you, okay. Rakaku dash. All right. Um. So yeah, that that's pretty much it, man. Um. You know, it's funny because I was looking for that one where he took the scapegoat. One dude takes him out there. Then he got to come and clean all his clothes. He got to burn his clothes, technically, and then soak in the water. You know, it's, it, man, the Day of Atonement was like a heavy, heavy day, man. You know, it was a heavy day. You know, but nevertheless, the scapegoat, um, yeah, there you go. You see, and he that let go the goat for the scapegoat shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in the water and afterwards come to camp. See, so he had to uh, do that, but he had to also burn his clothes. Um, You know, we'll let you know that what these priests were into being clean. So, you know, a lot of times you come from outside, you know, you brush up against things. Now, this goat was unclean. He had to bathe in the water because the goat itself buried that they transferred the energy of sins onto the goat. 
So how much people is bearing sins, like we see the, the movie Azazel, and we come across, we shake hands, we do this, we touch things, we, you know, blah, 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 we come back inside, you know? But, the, you know, this is why we got to just, hey, this is why the blood of Yahweh is important, because you can't escape it. You know, you can't escape it. You know, I mean, you try, you know, and you know what, dude, though, spiritually, when you wash, you feel fresh. It's funny, you know? Cause you, you ever did not wash, you feel like low in a low state or groggy. When you wash, you feel clean. You buy new clothes. That's one thing Jake don't understand. You know, Jake does. They don't understand when they buy clean clothes. Jake feels better about themselves. Why is that? Because ultimately, that would you know, in a physical sense, okay, what I'm saying, you know, was a righteous thing to do. Cause you you are now in something pure, clean. You know, versus, um, you know, wearing things. But these clothes, you know, got all types of idols on it. So I'm not saying, you know, go out, uh, you know, that these clothes cover you. I'm just, you know, comparing the two, you know, and looking at it. How does, you know, pretty much how he did this. Uh, he had the bathe. Um, um. See, he that burneth shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh. This is the dude who's burning the thing. But you just get to see how important they had to wash themselves, wash their clothes. Um, and one brother, I'm telling you, I think he had, he had to basically burn his garments. You know, if I get it. But, um, you know, because I'm just jumping around. I'm just jumping around. You know, again, you know, if you never read it, it's a, it's a real good read. A very good read. Um, but uh, let me get this. What you know about Yahweh Shai for basically bearing the sins of the people is in Isaiah 53. You know, because he literally was that scapegoat, Yahweh Shai. Um, you know, in the offering for himself. And he embodied everything. You see how they had to get this, the scapegoat, then this. Then they had to get the bullock for the people. And then this goat, you know, for his family, his household, this, you know. Yahweh shot bodied all of that. So I, I let you know. And and he didn't have to keep coming down and doing it. Because the Day of Atonement, you had to keep doing it. So imagine, you know, if we had to do the Day of Atonement in order to get our sins clean, honestly. Are you are we not capable to do that? Because then who's the high priest? We have to go in it. It would be crazy, bro. Because we don't know who the high we don't know who the sons of Aaron are. We don't know this and that. So those old testament guys, they they got a lot, they got a lot of hard shit to figure out. You know, good luck. You know, you might as well just, it's easier just coming in, and it's easier, man. But good luck, man. Isaiah um, 53 and 1. Is it 53? Yeah. Um, basically, it says... uh. You basically bear the sins of the people. Um, that's Isaiah 53. Ah. Uh, he's taking prison. He ain't pretty wicked. Yeah, please the Lord to bruise him. And offer him. Yeah, let's see. We okay, this is it. Isaiah 53 and 4. Surely he have borne our griefs. Okay. So the born our griefs is basically to carry, to sustain. So a lot of the shit that we even complain and go through now, most high took he took he took everything on our back. Imagine if he didn't. How much oh my gosh. Because when they said, you know what? Let his blood be on us. <laughs> And man, we couldn't even bear that, you know, Jake. This is this is this is part of it. Now they say, you know what? We are gonna carry that blood on us. We are gonna be the scapegoat for the Lord. Are you insane? Look at this shit that's happening now when Jake is freaking out. Oh man, yeah, she got, got shot down. I mean, look how it happened four hundred years ago. You know, we hung on trees. This, I mean, so hey, the Lord, if he didn't take, if he didn't bear our griefs. I don't know what the hell we would have went through. Because if we went through that and he bear, bear, you know, bore our grief, shit, man. <laughs> Yo, it's crazy. You know, this is just, man, we just be through. 
Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, you see? Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of Yahweh, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, you see, as a scapegoat. He was bruised, okay, for our inequities, you see? The chastisements of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes were we are healed. So that's it, that atonement. Amen. The water. All praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah by Shem Rakakadash. The water. You know, so Lord will, this is just a, a quick lesson. Lord willing, it was edifying. It was spirit and power. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah by Shem Rakakadash. Till the next time, I'll say Shalom.